Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be studying the basics of uh, design of welded joints or weldments. As we know, it finds applications in many areas such as the welding of structural buildings or bridges, and in ships we are used, and in this automobile uh, equipments and also the construction equipment. That means welding finds application in many areas. So we need to study the fundamentals of weld design. So by studying the welded design, we we may not be focusing on to this particular or specific applications, but we will be studying only the basics of the welded design. However, the the same can be applied to this uh, specific applications also. So with this focus, let me introduce the uh, types of weld joints here. So here in this figure, you can see two names. One is known as butt joint and lap joint. Here I am joining two plates. and that plates are being joined uh, joined or even if you are applying force it may not separate and that is by providing welded connections or welded join and here in this figure or in this butt join the plates are actually butting each other or they are at the same level and weld line or weld is applied in this direction and if if the plates are in the same plane then that type of weld is known as butt join and if the plates are overlapping that means lap overlapping each other then the weld join will be known as lap join and there is further classification of this lap join that we will be seeing after some time so basic basically butt join the plates are butting each other and in lap join the plates are overlap so here you can see the different types of butt join based on the geometry of the weld that is provided here and we may see the design of any type i think this type of design we will focus or discuss at the end of this one for the analysis of butt joint so this is simply the classification of butt joint based on the uh, cross section geometry of the uh, cross section of the weld and next we will be seeing the types of lap joint lap joint is also known as fillet joint so here plates are overlapping and here if i am applying force the plates will not separate because of the weld that is provided here also provided and on the bottom surface okay and here we will be having the basic classification of the lap or fillet joint thus the basic types are one is known as transverse joint and the another one is known as parallel lap is also known as fillet joint so it is transverse fillet and parallel fillet this is the basic classification and the transverse here it is showing Uh, the single transverse and here it is showing the double transverse and this is the double parallel the names are given at the bottom of each figure so transverse in the sense it is based on transverse or parallel comes in the sense uh, based on the directions of applied load and the weld line provided so here one plate is coming here another plate is overlapping that is one on the bottom and one on the top they are overlapping each other and here the applied load is in this direction but the weld provided is weld line is coming in this direction and here they are at a 90 degree with respect to each other and this type of weld is known as transverse they are perpendicular to each and here i am providing the weld line or you can see the weld line only at this location that the same is represented here the cross section we will be assuming it as a triangular and the details of the same thing will be discussed later so here weld is provided at a single location and it is transverse with respect to the direction of applied load so such a type of weld is known as single transverse fillet weld or lap joint here also plates are overlapping here also the applied load is perpendicular to the weld provided that means they are 90 with 90 degree so but here weld is provided at one location and also at this bottom or at this position so here it is transverse also weld is provided at two location so it is known as double transverse fillet weld joint uh, and the other thing is parallel fillet weld here the applied load is in this direction and the weld is provided also in a direction which is parallel to the uh, applied load so this kind of welded joint is known as parallel fillet joint here the parallel fillet welds are provided two location so you can call it as double parallel fillet weld this is actually double parallel fillet weld so this is basically the classification of lap joint now we will be analyzing this uh, design of this lap joints and butt joints in detail 
path how to connect with the loads dimensions the allowable stresses etc first we'll be seeing the analysis of single transverse fillet well transverse perpendicular to the applied load single means at one location so this is the same thing and here you can see the three dimensional view of the single transverse here we need to apply the direction of force so if i am applying in this direction force is applied on this uh, bottom plate and the top plate in this directions then this will be coming as transverse fillet because it is in a direction perpendicular to the applied load and also it is provided at a single location and the weld provided or this this will be the weld provided for this case and for analyzing such weld we will be assuming the cross section of the weld as a triangular that is the an isosceles triangle with two sides same so if i am notating the thickness of the plate that is the thickness of the plate to be joined as t then the same t will be occurring here also and this will be the size this will be t and here also this is t so here t is actually the thickness of the plate and here we are assuming the cross section of the weld to be of triangular in shape isosceles triangular in shape isosceles triangle in shape and this size of the weld we will be calling as h where the h is called as size of the weld size of the weld this is an important parameter which uh, which is actually evaluated in the design of such welded joints so the, if this is h and this is h this is known as size of the weld and h is equal to thickness usually thickness in the case of this welded joints and here if you are seeing if i am applying load in this direction then this load is to be standard by this uh, welded joint provided against this applied load the maximum resisting area will be coming like this here if you are taking the area or if you are uh, uh, notating the values this is the size of the weld h and this is the length of the weld that i have provided and if i am finding the area of this one that is actually corresponding to this area is corresponding to this face or this vertical line if i am projecting with respect to l length in the third direction then you will be getting the same area which is h into l so here the area of the weld will be equal to h into l similarly if i am calculating the stress at the bottom plane also here also a resisting area of h into l is coming which is corresponding to the bottom line if this line is extended in the third direction then this is the length then this area will be coming h into l so here uh, the area is hl at this face and also at the bottom face it area is also hl but at some position in between the if you are moving from this line to this line there at some location the resisting area will be minimum or it will be lesser than the h into l value and that section we are actually taking for the analysis of the weld design that means if i am taking a line or if i am drawing a line like this and if i if i am finding the thickness that is the distance between these points i will be calling it as ht and if you are observing this ht will be definitely lesser than h if i are projecting in the third direction then the area will be ht into l this will also be lesser than h into l that means corresponding to this thickness or uh, the this location that means this location the area is minimum compared to the normal h into l so such an area will be representing the weakest area within the weld section and that is known as throat section or this is known as throat area and throat area is equal to ht into l and we have a relation between the ht and h ht is always lesser than s that means ht will be equal to a fraction lesser than 1 and that value is 0 0.707 times h this is actually h by root 2 from derivations we are obtaining this one anyway you need to remember this one only this is given in the data books design data books also so ht equal to 0 0.707 h so with this if the load is applied onto the transverse fillet weld always remember in transverse fillet weld normal stress will be produced normal stress sigma will be produced so i can evaluate the normal stress produced sigma equal to force by area and that minimum or weakest area you need to take which is corresponding to the throat section so i can write ht into l and this is equal to f divided by ht is 0.707 
seven zero seven h into l, and this is actually equal to one by point seven zero seven or one by one by root two is root two, which is one point four one four f divided by h l. I can write this. So uh, this is actually the analysis of single transverse fillet weld, where I am relating the load applied f with respect to the size of the weld h. And also the alloy weight strength they can relate the sigma. Anyway, sigma is equal to F by H T into L, or finally 1.414 into F divided by H. In a similar way, I can analyze the double transverse fillet weld also. So in the case of here, it is transverse because the load is applied in this direction, and the sorry load is applied in this direction, and the weld is provided here. But weld is Uh, given at the two locations, one at the top and one at the bottom, so you can call it as double transverse fillet. And we have assumed the cross section of the weld as triangle, and where we have discussed about the throat sections or the throat thickness (HTS) 0.707h. And at this location, we will be having a throat area of HT in dual. Similarly, it is double transverse, so at this section also we are having a throat area of HT in dual. That means, if here I am applying a load of F compared to the previous case, here two weld sections or two throat sections will be coming, which is actually resisting the applied load. So here also in this transverse fillet weld also normal stress sigma will be produced, which is equal to force by the throat areas. But here we are having two throat areas since it is a double transverse. So two throat areas. So the same thing I can write like F divided by Two into a single throat area is H T into L, and this is again equal to F divided by two into H T is point seven zero seven H into L. So this is equal to point seven zero seven into F divided by H L will be get. I will be showing you all these equations in the. Data book also. So this is the analysis of double transverse fillet weld. In a similar way, we can analyze the parallel fillet weld also. And here, one thing to uh, note is, in the case of parallel fillet weld, shear stress will be produced, and we are evaluating the direct shear stress based on the force by area. And in this figure, you are seeing a parallel fillet weld because load is applied in this direction and the weld is provided in this direction. Here, two welds are provided, so it is known as double parallel fillet weld. And if the length of each parallel fillet weld is L, that means here also this length is L and this length is L. And again, here also the cross section is assumed to be of isosceles triangle with this size, that is known as the leg of the weld H. Then, if you are comparing these two uh, dimensions, that is H and L, at this location the weld or the throat area will be equal to H T into L. There will be some section with the minimum thickness, and that is known as throat section. So this is the throat section or throat area. Similarly, here also another throat section is coming, which is H T into L. So here. Load is applied in this direction. I am applying the load. This is F. So here load is in a direction parallel to the weld applied. That makes it parallel fillet weld. Here it is double because weld are provided two locations, and shear stress is produced. This is important to note. In this case, the shear stress produced will be equal to force by area. Here two weld sections or two throat sections are there, which is two into H T into L. So in a similar way, I can expand. This is F divided by two into point seven zero seven H into L, and finally this will be becoming point seven zero seven F divided by H L. And here it is shear stress. So this is the expression, or this is the way we are analyzing the uh, parallel fillet weld. So this is the uh, figure. Here you can see the direction of Applied load. That is, the load is applied in this direction onto the plate. Here, the side view is also shown. But here, welds are provided, which are coming in a direction parallel to the applied load, and also in a direction perpendicular. That makes it's a combined parallel and transverse fillet weld. If you are naming it properly, this is double parallel and single transverse. So here, a load of P is applied, and we need to analyze the combined parallel and transverse fillet weld. See, if I am applying the load P, the same will be withstanded by both this double parallel and the single transverse, and we will be 
taking or will be splitting the load taken by parallel as p suffix p and the load taken by transverse as p suffix t that means this parallel will be combinedly taking a load of p suffix p and this will be taking a load of p suffix t that means i can write like this p is equal to p parallel taken by parallel fillet weld plus transverse fillet weld and earlier we have evaluated the stress as simply load by area then i can write p equal to stress into area this is the general equation we are having so we need to have expressions for p suffix p that is the load taken by parallel fillet weld and we know that in the case of parallel fillet weld the types of stress is shear so i can write load equal to stress into area here shear stress into area like this i can write and in the case of transverse fillet weld normal stress is produced so sigma into a i can write this is area of parallel and this is area of transverse and the same thing i can expand this is equal to shear stress into length of the or area of the parallel fillet weld is here two sections are provided so 2 into ht into l i can write like this and here this is equal to a single transverse so it is equal to sigma into ht into l like this i can write that means in final way the load applied p will be equal to the load taken by parallel part plus load taken by transverse and this is equal to the sum of the above term above two terms to into 2 into ht into l plus sigma into ht into l in this way i can right here ht you can represent in terms of h that is ht equal to 0.707 this uh, into h this expansion you can use in this uh, final uh, terms also so this is the way how you have to analyze combined parallel and transverse fillet weld so here you can see the analysis of symbol butt weld this is very simple here in butt weld the plates are in the same plane and here i am applying the load here you are you are seeing a uh, 60 degree v type weld so this angle may be 60 degree commonly used and here the weld section if you are analyzing the the plate thickness will be equal to t and the same is known as h size of the weld here if you are analyzing the weakest section is coming here which we are calling it as ht but here ht value is equal to h not there is any another fractions are coming in this one ht value will be equal to h so here if you are analyzing force applied this is the force applied f and the f will be creating a normal stress on this weld section so sigma will be equal to force by area and force by area means if this is the length l then this will be equal to simply ht into l and here ht equal to h so i can write f divided by h into l so analysis is simple so here only but well this is for the but weld so with this we'll be seeing the equations all these discussed equations are given in the data book also so this is for the but welded joints the thing which we have explained now so this is equal to the same expression sigma equal to p by h into l you can see and here in this page you can see the exp expression for single transverse double transverse uh, double parallel all these things are given here and with this we'll be solving a simple problem from the uh, concept so here we are having an 80 mm wide and 12 mm thick plate subjected to axial load and it is welded by a single transverse and a double parallel fillet weld the maximum tensile and the allowable shear strength of the weld sections are given based on this we need to analyze so here this value is equal to 80 mm so this value 80 mm means this is actually the length of transverse fillet weld so lt equal to 80 mm and lp we need to find the length of parallel fillet weld we need to find so in the last case we explained that the load applied will be taken by the parallel part as well as the transverse part and the parallel part will be producing shear stress so this one i can write it as shear stress into area here area two weld sections are coming so here one st into lp will be coming here another st into lp will be coming so i can write 2 into ht into length of the parallel fillet weld like this i can write and this transverse a single transverse it is so at this location this area will be minimum area will be or across the throttle section will be ht into l and here normal stress will be produced so i can write sigma into ht into l like this i can write 
and here the thickness of the plate is 12 mm that means if you are observing this dimension is actually 12 mm and this is equal to the leg of the weld that means this is the leg of the weld so h equal to thickness so h equal to thickness of the plate equal to 12 mm and from this you can connect between the throat section hd which is 0.707 into h where h is 12 mm you can relate so the applied load value is not directly given but we need to evaluate because here load is applied at the end of the plate so once the load is applied the plate should be able to withstand it so at this end the cross section of the plate will be like this and this area or this applied load at this area will be creating a normal stress and that this section should be able to withstand so if you are observing this dimension is 80 mm and this thickness is 12 mm thickness of the plate so the area of the plate will be equal to 80 into 12 mm and at this location so this is the area and the allowable normal stress for the same thing is given which is 100 mega pascal so into 100 will be giving you the total load applied so p will be equal to area of the section into that is 80 into 12 mm into allowable stress 100 uh, this will be giving you a load of 96000 newton so the same value i can use here so the p will be equal to 9600 96000 newton this is equal to again this expression so i can write first i will be writing the tau tau allowable shear strength is 70 mega pascal all dimensions here i will be using in newton and mm so 70 into 2 into hd value is 0.707 into h value is 12 mm into lp this is the unknown we need to evaluate plus second term is this one that is sigma again it is sigma is 100 into hd is 0.707 into h is 12 into length of the transverse fillet well which is 80 mm given so from this only unknown is the lp which is the thing we have to find now if you are solving it properly you will be getting a value of around 24 mm so the length of the parallel fillet weld required will be around 24 mm usually add another 10 mm to this length of parallel fillet weld and we will be writing it like uh, the for starting and stopping of the weld bead we are providing an extra 10 mm to the uh, this length that we have added so this is the procedure for analyzing the uh, combined parallel and transverse fillet weld we have seen a sample problem also here so in this video we have uh, discussed about the analysis of symbol transverse and the fillet weld how to name this weld and the analysis where we have seen the importance of throat sections where it is having or it is providing the minimum area or it is the weakest area against the load supply so we have seen this equation and also you can find these equations in the data book so uh, hope you understood uh, this problem or what are things we have discussed in this one and thanks for watching